Hi, we're going to take a look at Beyond 2000 Book 2. Click here if you want to watch the first book video, you'll know what's going on here. So let's go through and see what predictions came true from 1987 in all of these different fields. Let's get to it. Actually, there's an interesting bit of uh, timeline here on what goes into actually producing one of the uh, Beyond 2000 episodes. So I'll let you read that for those playing along at home. Fly-by-wire aircraft with the ABUS A320. Yep, we got those today. No worries. Planes practically fly and land themselves. Flying dinosaurs. Yep, I saw that in War Games in 1985. Jeez, so much for the future. Voice command, talking to machines, well, yeah, okay, Siri and all that sort of crap these days, yeah, people are talking to their smartphones, I still prefer to type. And here they're talking about uh, sustainable homes of the future and all that sort of stuff, uh, houses from oil and gas, manufactured from oil and garbage, and yeah, we, you know, we've made some progress uh, towards uh, sustainable buildings and stuff like that, but... Uh, not a huge amount, so I'm going to call that one a bit of a fail. Moon habitat research stations? <laughs> that never happened. Deaf people will be able to hear things uh, using a, a fantastically modern micro uh, controller that actually projects um, symbols onto glasses. Well, that didn't happen. What a bummer. We've made some great progress in bioengineering, but the six million dollar man, eh, never happened. Bummer. Holograms! Holograms were the future 30 years ago, and eh, yeah, really it hasn't really happened, has it? Ah, oh, another bummer. Dot Matrix Skyriding, whatever happened to that? I just saw one the other day. Nah, it's a plane flying around, just dragging the smoke, drawing the letters. Nah. Panoramic cameras. They didn't see the digital photography revolution coming. Nope. Good old 35mm film. The Watchman was supposed to replace your homely television. Nope. People have bloody 100-inch LCDs nowadays. Still watching at home. Or on their bloody smartphones. Laser tag and other virtual reality stuff. Um, yeah, it's still coming along, but 30 years later, oh, we're not living in Tron. Water jet cutting. Yep, that's still a thing, but eh, laser cutting these days is the go. Sugar alcohol for our fuels? Yep, that actually worked. Ethanol, E10. It's all over this country, you can't buy anything else. Have they actually turned the Dead Sea into a power source? I don't think so. Synthetic fuels? Yep, that's a thing. The Amazon rainforest? That's still going down the toilet, isn't it? Uh, Bioacoustics? Nope. We ain't talking to Flipper 30 years later. Orbiting factories? <laughs> a European space shuttle, the French Hermes? That didn't happen. The Hotel will be able to take off and land at any airport that's big enough to take Concorde, the British Airways Hotel. Did that happen? Well, yeah, Elon Musk is doing okay now, 30 years later, but we've only just sort of haven't even perfected it. We've only just started really doing it. So 30 years later on SETI, and uh, did E.T. call? Nope, don't think so. How's the universe going to end? Well, within 20 years or so, astronomers will be able to tell us something about the ultimate fate of the universe. Will we face death by heating, or will there be a big crunch and all the rest of it? Well, I don't know, the verted verdict's kind of still out on that. Millions of files with millions of pieces of information on millions of people. And all it takes to see inside your life is a touch of a few buttons. <gasps> we have every reason to be worried about the storage and possible misuse of personal data. But our high-speed society is already dependent upon the computer's fast service. You think? Yeah. It's actually 1984 pretty much now. Multicolored lasers? Yep, that's a thing. This Waybot, a piano playing robot designed in Japan, can read music through a TV camera, convert the info into finger movements. Clever, certainly. But does it have a soul? Do computers have a soul 30 years later? Nope. Cellular telephones? What kind of future is this? Sonic tape measures? Oh, I'm not sure either of those things worked out. 
There is also the Explorer phone, which customers can take with them when they leave their cars. <gasps> Imagine the benefits of making a telephone call from a restaurant table or walking through a park or lazing on the beach. The frustration of finding only vandalized public telephone <laughs> boxes would be a thing of the past if, you if only you had a portable phone in your pocket. Wow. In the United States, there are also proposals to install cellular payphones on public transport. Oh, wow, what a future. Like most sophisticated technology, cellular phones don't come cheaply. If yours is a household where the arrival of the domestic telephone account is a signal for wrath and frustration, you might be better off breeding a few carrier pigeons or, or taking some lessons in transcendental meditation. <laughs> Oh goodness, yeah, 1986. Video camera glasses! Yep, we've got those! And they still don't live up to expectations, they're hopeless! Lisa plastic? It was supposed to be some new whiz-bang plastic that would, uh, you know, amplify light and light up stuff and things like that. I just googled Lisa plastic and I got plastic bloody surgery. Lisa's ability to amplify visible light will be used to brighten up a whole range of goodies from jewellery and emergency exit signs to calculator and wristwatch displays, even perhaps as a way of efficiently capturing solar energy to run power plants. Um, nope. Flat tyres will be a thing of the past in the future. Nope. For all you car aficionados, whatever happened to the Vector W2? Oh, baby. Look at that interior. Oh, that's the future. Well, I've got to say, that book was pretty disappointing. Let's try book three, shall we? And these gems come from 1989. So that was, geez, practically the 90s. Surely they would have got the predictions right. Well, right off the bat, we ain't using floppy drives anymore. Ultralights, aviation for the masses. Eh, not really. The Cray 2 supercomputer! Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler! Look at this! 250 megaflops a second! Oh, it's just unbeatable. Jetting into the 1990s, we'd be going back to propeller jets. Um, yeah, no. X-Wing, the shape of the future! Nope. As a result, many of the problems that plague conventional helicopters will be eliminated, and it is likely that helicopters built using this principle will eventually achieve much the same speeds as conventional aircraft. Well, no, that didn't really happen. Sorry. But paraplanes are the future. Anyone can learn to fly one in an hour. Never really happened. Solar tiles were going to replace regular terracotta roof tiles. Yeah, no, not really. Friction welding. Well, yeah, I think that's kind of a thing, but, you know, not really anyone ever thinks about. MRIs. Yep, that's definitely a thing. I had one on my knee just a while back. And they're available pretty much anywhere, and if a doctor refers you to one here, pff, doesn't cost anything. Commodore's mud. Back then, to get an MRI working, <laughs> you had to have an analog oscilloscope, obviously. Leech therapy. Um, nope. Guitar robots! Surely they're a thing! Electronic art! Cool! Yeah, people are still doing it! Power size! The power size gymnasium is a 30 million dollar complex that houses humanoid gymnasium machines. These machines have synthetic voices and are renowned for bullying and ridiculing their clients as well as encouraging them. Um, did that happen? Nope. My modern virgin gym is just full of old-fashioned weights and, you know, maybe the odd kinesis machine, but, yeah, that's about as uh, fancy-pantsy as it gets. The wristwatch radio, surely Dick Tracy happened. Well, yeah, it came and then went and then smartphones came along. Thank you very much. The water watch. Power your watch from a drop of water. Um, yeah, that came and went. Now I've got stupid bloody smartwatches that get, you know, five, seven days battery life or something ridiculous like that. I weep for the future. The future of audio is digital audio tape. There was no question about it. Um, yeah. Anyone still using it? Solar collectors shaped like radio dishes. Mm, no, not really. Is anyone doing that? Not sure. Biogas for energy production? Yeah, we're doing that. 
turbo sails for boats. Surely would power all boats in the future. Ah, uh, no. Will the turbo sail usher in a renaissance of wind power at sea? As we all know, designing and proving a good idea with great economic advantages does not always guarantee its immediate acceptance. There are always market forces to be reckoned with, as well as the conservatism that often seems hell-bent on retarding progress. <laughs> Nuclear fusion, almost 30 years later. Aww. Still waiting for it. It's going to happen, I'm telling you. Nuclear waste, the problem that just won't go away. Yeah, 30 years later, it hasn't gone away. It's still just going, meh, leave it to the next generation. They'll figure it out. The deep gas theory, unlimited new energy. Look at this. Ha <laughs> ha. Approximately 360 million years ago, a giant meteorite two kilometers in diameter crashed into the earth, fracturing the rock crust to a great depth. The Siljan ring theory proposes that great voids were formed five to seven kilometers below the earth's surface and that these voids have been filled with gas seeping through fractures connected to inner regions of the earth. Did that actually, yeah, did they um, confirm that? And are we tapping it? Mm, nope. Plasma dust. <laughs> is that a thing? I don't know. Steel industry waste is highly toxic and a problem in most countries. Sweden has developed a system known as plasma dust that recovers metal, non-toxic landfill and energy for community hot water and heating systems for waste that costs uh, other nations millions of dollars in disposal costs. Hey, Swedish viewers, is this still a thing? Talking to the animals, we had this in book number one. It's still not a thing. Flipper just... Oh, he's not talking. The British Aerospace Hull Toll is still not a thing. Americans in space. Yeah, we all know what happened there. Hmm. Mars rovers, though. Yep, we did that. Awesome. Space tugs. Um, nope. Space gets internationalized, and they're talking about Japan and their space efforts, and, well, they didn't fare a huge amount better. Video helmets were going to be the thing. And they still aren't. They still suck. Mission to Mars. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's kind of revived now. All the 2030s, they're saying, you know. Before the end of the century, robots will have landed on the surface of the planet and blasted off again, bringing back to Earth the first Mars rocks. Nope. But the surface will have been mapped as precisely as the Earth's. Oh, yeah, we're doing pretty good there. So, you know, I'll give that one a win. Um, one day, early in the next century, a human being will walk on Mars. 30 years after, at least, if that even happens. Thanks to the electronics revolution in miniaturization and integrated circuits, some of the most spectacular technology now comes to us in familiar objects such as calculators, digital watches, microwaves, and credit cards. One slender wafer or disc of silicon, only 100 to 125 millimeters wide. It can hold more than 200,000 electrical components. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah. What is it, 10 nanometers these days? Electronic books. Yep. That's a win, although we're not reading them on the PC, we're reading them on our stupid, smart, phablet, bloody phone things and Kindles, nobody uh, suspected uh, e-ink displays. Ikea, yep, they're still around and, yep, they're still not paying any taxes. The Model Z X-ray system exposing the features of terrorism. And here they are predicting the Kindle <laughs> with the Holy Bible on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, with the uh, uh, LCD display, no, it's all e-ink these days, but hey, electronic books were a thing, but have a look how they were delivered. Country of origin, Australia, thank you very much, 2,300 pages of text, only for 130 bucks Australian, you bloody ripper. When searching for something new to whet your electronic reading appetite, all you have to do is insert your text pack into an automated teller machine and punch in information about the text required. The relevant prose would be quickly downloaded from the publisher to your pack via a telephone line. <laughs> Anyone remember the Doomsday Project? <laughs> the Doomsday Book? Um, that was a BBC thing to try and, like, capture, 
like a Wikipedia style uh, snapshot of Britain at the time with like photos of streets and things like that. And oh goodness, there's the tech specs for those playing along at home. The Ulti card, pocket in your banking. Oh, look at this, fantastic. This is the future, a technological invention that will soon be widely available. This small data bank can hold as much information as a personal computer. Oh, yeah. No one would get seasick anymore in the future because, well, this puppy would uh, just fix all of those problems. But, yeah, they, I don't know. Anyone seen one of those lately? Active suspension in a Volvo? Yeah, that happened. Continuously variable transmissions? Well, yep, that happened. My uh, Nissan Dualis has uh, got one of those, but still, like, steam car, a new age of power. Where's the electric cars? Magnetic levitation, flying trains. Yep, I've been on one, and yep, it does 400 k's an hour, and now they got all the Hyperloop bullshit. That'll never happen. Jeez, just... And practicalities. <gasps> Mercedes control. Oh yeah, all these computerized control systems. Oh, it's all happened, but where's our electric cars? Surely we've got an electric car. Come on. No, that's it. So there you have it, the future. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that look at these Beyond 2000 books from the 1980s and how some things have happened and some things have not happened, failed miserably. But most of the stuff that we take for granted these days, which has revolutioned our lives, basically nobody predicted the internet and smartphones and the communications revolution and the e-commerce uh, revolution online and all that sort of jazz, and let alone YouTube, Twitter and the whole rest of it. Let's just forget Facebook ever happened, shall we? Hmm. Catch you next time.